This is a follow-up video to the overview video that I produced a few months ago. So if you haven't seen the first video, click the link up in the corner and go check that out. It has chapter headings that will take you directly to whatever part you want. You don't have to watch it in order. It is a longer video, but it is intended to be comprehensive for those actually considering using this and giving you the information you need to decide on whether this machine is right for you. I'm assuming that since you're here on this follow-up video that you've already watched the video, maybe you bought one and you want more information, maybe you're considering it and you want more information, and this is some follow-up after four and a half months of using the machine. It's been nearly five months since I bought the LG all-in-one washer and dryer. The model number is WM3998HBA. That's their larger all-in-one combo washer. And it's time for an update with some additional information and things that I've learned in the four and a half, nearly five months of use. So we know users have experienced problems with this machine drying completely and they go through a complete dry cycle and they open the door and they say, my clothes are still damp. Usually at the end of an automatic dry, I'll do a full load of laundry or a fairly full load of laundry. It's about a four hour and 48 minute cycle is pretty common for the normal cycle. And that uh, includes two and a half hours of dry time or so with the steam cycle. I'm, I'm using steam a lot in a lot of my washes. That's a pretty normal wash cycle. And when it comes out of that dry cycle at the end of the wash and automatic dry, you'll open the door and everything will feel damp. And actually 90% of the time that dampness is not wet. It's just the buildup of humidity inside the machine and it's a quality of a, the machine being a ventless dryer. That moisture that you're feeling, that dampness that you're feeling out of your load is really just the buildup of humidity and is endemic to the fact that this is a ventless dryer and the dryer doesn't have anywhere to vent that heat and humidity. So it does collect inside. So usually what happens is if you pull that load out and you pull it out and put it in your laundry basket, um, and let it sit out and let that humidity dissipate, you'll find that 90% of the time your clothes are actually dry. What I like to do instead is that when the wash cycle is finished, I'll crack the door open and I'll let the humidity escape. And then I come back in 30 minutes or so and I pull out the laundry and then I know it's either dry or it needs another 30 minutes of dry cycle. And that's how I've had the best success uh, with your average uh, load of laundry and your no normal laundry cycles and that sort of thing. Another key to successful drying with this machine is to be conscious of the size of your load. If you wash a full load with this machine, you need to know that it, if you dry that full load with the entire load of laundry in there, it is going to take longer to dry. This is a 4.5 cubic foot washer, and that is a standard large sized washer. It's not the gigantic washer, but it's a pretty substantial washer. But 4.5 cubic feet is small for a dryer. And uh, if you have that washer fully packed with a full load, and then you're trying to dry that entire full load, that's going to extend your dry time and the machine does calculate the size and bulk and weight and mass of that load. And it will know that that's a bigger load and it will extend the dry time to accommodate. But I always do about a two thirds to three quarter full load of laundry maximum. And I have great success with that and then going into immediate drying afterwards. And often I'm doing small loads, about half, half a load or smaller and I have great success with the wash and dry cycle that way. So I recommend if you do a full massive load of laundry to wash, that when you dry it, you don't go automatically into the dry cycle. You pull out half the load, put it in your laundry basket, dry one half of it, and then when that's dry, dry the other half. 
and you'll have more success. And I think some people have experienced problems with wrinkles. And I think the bigger this machine is loaded, the more it's going to increase your wrinkling problem. I don't experience a lot of wrinkling issues with the t-shirts and permanent press items. I don't see a lot of wrinkling issues with jeans. I don't see it with the towels. Um, I, I do see it a little bit with sheets, but uh, you know, sheets are gonna get folded and put away and then they're gonna get stretched out. So I don't really think wrinkles on a pair of sheets is a big issue, but uh, some people have experienced wrinkling problems. So that's some of the things you can do to avoid uh, wrinkles and get better success out of your dry times. And again, if you are taking your load and washing it and then choosing the timed dry cycle of 90 minutes is a good place to start for you know half to two thirds load of standard cotton clothing then you didn't do the high or the extra high spin part probably so i would recommend then that you allow it to do that 90 minute dry plus the 25 minute of spin and you'll have a better chance of getting your clothes dry because of that spin cycle extracting the water before the dryer cycle kicks in one other factor to consider is your quality of your clothing and it's important i think to get successful dry cycles to wash clothing that has similar absorbency qualities to it so i wouldn't normally dry jeans with t-shirts because the jeans tend to absorb more, more moisture and it takes more work to get them out so I will dry my t-shirts and my socks and underwear and lighter weight clothing separately and I'll do that in a separate load. We're used to doing loads that are separating the colors from the whites and the you know hot stuff from the cold stuff and that sort of thing. But with this machine, you have to add another layer to that. You need to think of moisture absorbency of the fabric. And not to mix and match to have better success with the dry cycle. So you can do jeans and towels usually are good together, but even towels tend to absorb much more moisture than the jeans do. So you might have a little bit longer dry time with the towels. There is the towel uh, cycle here and the towel, I think I mentioned in the other video was the recommended cycle for towels and jeans even though it just says towels on the outside um, in the manual, it re recommends that also for jeans uh, as well. That's a good cycle for that. I don't really use that cycle at all because this side of the machine doesn't allow the steam cycle. And I feel like I'm often wanting to run a, a steam cycle through the towels to get some of the uh, mildewy, moisture smell from the towel sitting in the bathroom. Um, or uh, my jeans get dirty, uh, some of my work jeans. So I want to have that uh, steam cycle to give extra cleaning power uh, to the machine. And I can't do that with anything on this side. So I'll choose normal. Um, or if my jeans are really soiled, I'll choose heavy duty. But uh, um, so I'm not using the towel cycle a whole lot. Another thing to consider when you're mixing and matching your fabrics in the wash and dry cycle is cottons versus synthetics. And I have experienced some times where everything in the machine that's cotton is dry after the normal dry cycle, but then some of these spandex and rayon and synthetic clothes are still very, very damp and very, very moist. So I would recommend that you try to separate spandex and synthetics and rayons separate from your cottons and you'll have more success in the dry cycle. Some of those fabrics will be what we call sportswear or active wear and because of that those aren't even recommended to be dried because they have some plastic components and things that could damage the machine. So normally you're you're washing the sportswear and you're hand drying it somewhere hanging it up to dry and letting it dry that way rather than using the the, the automatic dryer here. Uh, and I think sportswear doesn't allow you to even select a dry cycle like the, like the bedding cycle. But if you experience that some clothes are drying and some that aren't, try to identify which ones are synthetic fabrics, uh, rayons, spandex, that sort of thing, and maybe dry those separately 
or pull out all the dry cotton clothes and run the uh, synthetic stuff for that extra half hour uh, or hour or whatever extra dry cycle it is that you need. Mm -hmm.